This video is going to be an explanation on item banking or setting up a bank of items within a test to be selectively pulled from. To begin, just a little background. A test can be built and a static form can be generated. Those 10 questions, those 50 questions are always delivered. Items can be randomized. So you could have the same 50 questions, but they could be del delivered in a different order. Or the responses could be randomized. So A is not always A. Sometimes it's C. Sometimes it's D. Uh, but the correctness flows with the correct response. In order to set up an item banking test, which is the next evolution of test delivery, uh, before we get to CAT and LOFT and some of those uh, more advanced examples, uh, you have to set up questions so that they can be delivered in a banked format. And we manage that through this back attribute called tags and attributes. So each one of these items, if I click on them, will have potentially one or more tags and will have some attributes. In this case, this item has a vocabulary medium. So this is a vocabulary test. The difficulty is 1.27. In this case, if I click on this one, it has a difficulty of 0.42 and a vocabulary hard. So this is a little bit harder uh, item per the tag. I can go into the section settings. So by clicking on the blue bar, uh, I can establish the section settings. And there's an option or a, tag, a tab in here for item configuration. I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the, or uh, remove some of these, uh, and we'll start from scratch. So I'm killing all of what's been set up before, and we'll try to roughly repli replicate that. So begin on the left-hand side. You can sort items as authored, or you can randomize them. If you randomize them, uh, they will be delivered in a different order. Another way to randomize or maybe control the item delivery is to say by attribute and I would like the difficulty to ascend. So as I go through the test, the test gets harder. These are mutually exclusive. You can't both randomize and create a difficulty by attribute and ascend them because the randomization wouldn't work. So let's choose to do by difficulty, and then we'll randomize the answer sorting, which means A is sometimes C is sometimes B, uh, depending on the test form. That way no one could say, hey, the answer to number two is B. Uh, and we can automatically break after four questions, one question, two question, whatever. Where the banking comes in, or the item filtering, is you can establish items by tag. So let's say I want exactly two items with vocabulary easy. I want exactly two items with vocabulary hard. And I want exactly two items uh, with vocabulary medium. So I've generated a six uh, item section and I'm getting a little bit of everything. I could say the total items are six. If I change this to at least, uh, I, I could maybe go higher. And I could go um, more, but I know that these attributes are the only attributes I have on the item, so I have to make this match. So I have six total items. Maybe there's an enemy item. Perhaps uh, the question on rude is in conflict, meaning I'll learn something about it if I also deliver the game items. So I don't want those two to be delivered in the same section. And you can establish other enemy pairs by clicking on Add Enemy Pairs. And let's say I want um, a relatively equivalent test. I could say I want the sum of the difficulty to be greater than or equal to 3.2. And I also want the sum of the difficulty to be less than uh, 4.5. Uh, so that is to say, I'm going to get a six-question section that does not include both rude and game items. And I want the difficulty of all those items to sum up to be between these attributes. Uh, so I'm going to make this a little more varied because I'm not exactly sure um, how this is going to add up. So I'm going to say it's, it's between one and seven, uh, just so nothing breaks. And I hit finish. And I actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 15 questions, but I'm only going to deliver 6. So if I click on this eyeball, assuming I didn't break anything, it should give me 6 items. It's going to say, do you want the section sorting, the randomization filtering, all that turned on? I say yes. And it's going to deliver me 6 questions. I'm going to respond to them. Uh, if we want to turn on some of the attributes, we could display... Um, attributes and we could see uh, what the difficulty of those items are. 
uh, as we go because we use that as one of the parameters for uh, setting up the test. And I should get six questions. So I have five and six. So I've established an item bank test. Uh, it went on to section two. Um, and it, it used those item banking configuration rules. A really handy tool beyond the eyeball is if you want to validate uh, your banking rules. So let's say I want to see item filtering and I want to do it for 50 tests. I could run a simulation and this would tell me uh, how many times we got successful tests generated. I got 50 out of 50. So a lot of ways this test could be built. 45 unique forms could be generated. Uh, and then section one, it'll break it down and tell me uh, how, many I, how many times were these particular items used. So rude, because probably because it was part of that um, enemy item, was only delivered four times. So it's a way to simulate and show, look, edge is going to, and deer are going to be generated a lot, and tax and rude are not. Uh, so that might help you understand your banking rules and which items are going to get exposed. It shows some other statistics like average item frequency, number of items per test, um, standard deviations, etc. So a great way to review uh, how your item banking has been set up. And I'll close that. So a little bit about item banking, randomization, setting up different item banking rules. And I can do the exact same thing at the test level. I click on settings and I click on item constraints and you'll see a lot of the same pieces by tag, sum of attribute, uh, some of the some of the availability doesn't make sense uh, because they can be set at the section level, but we also have item constraints at the test level. So if you have multiple sections in a test and you need to constrain it across sections, this can be used as well. So I hope that's helpful on setting up item bank tests, randomization, uh, distractor randomization, uh, as well as enemy items and sums of attributes.